But what is the nature of the flawed figure, the loud voice? I wondered this through years of nonconformity. I wondered where nature resides, if not in these hips, thighs, and breasts, when all we do is somehow constructed for viewing by another, and really, we just make it look natural. I'm thankful now that the body does not always conform. It refuses to look natural as it is being pinched or cut. Is this whole concept of becoming the subject of your own story rather than the object of another's gaze, is, is that make sense to folks? One of those things that I think it's important to practice is recognizing your personal sovereignty. Like recognizing that your body, your mind, your emotions, that you are a sovereign entity. Yeah, and there's a couple of ways that you can practice your personal sovereignty. One of them is to be aware of the time you spend, your time and your energy, right? Be aware of it rather than feeling like you're forced to do things, make choices. The second way is to know your business. So like if you have a job, how much of your life and your time are you willing to give for that sum of money? If you're a student, what do you want from that school? Make it your business to know how to get it. The third thing is to recognize power relationships. Wow, that's deep. Power relationships are everywhere. Right? What will be your relationship to power when you see it? Will you partner with power? Will you amass power? Will you rail against power? It might be a different answer under different circumstances. You know? But notice power relationships. The other thing I would suggest to you is to imagine the world that you would like to live in and act as though that's already where you live. Yeah? So, like, imagine that world in the positive, right? We live in a world where everyone loves and respects the planet, and then just act that way. There's no longer anything to fix, there's nothing to be mad at. Just act as if we're already in the world we want to see. That brings us into our subjectness, right? Notice the way your friends and your acquaintances and people in your community struggle and help them out help them reframe their own thinking. Because when you start becoming the subject of your own story, it helps other people as well. Shall I tell you another story now? <laughs> Let me do that. <laughs> My friend said, I haven't written a poem since last year. I stopped doing it. My new creative project is my body. Yeah, I've lost about 30 pounds now, I'm working out. My body is my creative project. I've decided to sculpt fat. I felt suddenly lightheaded. You know, like in any bad social situation where you have to listen to somebody say something inane and be polite, or wait. In this situation, maybe I was supposed to be supportive. Think she'd said something witty. No. No, if sculpting fat were an art form, we'd all be Rodin or Moore or Claudel. We'd all be gifted, lauded, and comfortable with our expressions. <laughs> but this isn't really comfortable, is it? It's because it isn't really art. This is the place where women's creativity goes to die. And every time I hear her say what she will think or feel or be or do once she's thin, I just want to scream. Stop waiting, darling, and live your life now. When you see a woman with a really big ass, she has that ass for one of two reasons. Either she comes from big ass people genetically, <laughs> or she's had a tough life, as many of us have, and she's chosen an addiction that doesn't fuck up her ability to think. <laughs> right. Either she has a big ass because she's supposed to, or because she's made the best choices she can under the circumstances she was given. Oh, come on. You all know those choices. But hey, there is no one alive who has a big ass because she is stupid, or lazy, or inattentive. Oh my god, when did that get there? I just didn't notice. 
<laughs> and having a big ass does not keep her from being capable or sexual or lovable or damaged by people who want to attach female worth to their ability to remain as small as children. 